morning, Jane. How are you? Hello, Ben. Hello. We got there. How are you? I'm well. How's yourself? Really good, thanks. Nice, nice and early in Brisbane. No, no time for rock and roll, is it? <laughs> <laughs> How are you today? I'm well, thank you. Excellent. I've always got time to sound as ever. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, congratulations on the amazing compilation. I mean, I know it's a year old now, but thank you for putting it together and thank you for providing Wax Lyrical with their first ever compilation. I mean, I never dreamed I would do a compilation for Wax Lyrical because we're all purists, you see. You know, we need full albums and whatnot. I'm just I'm just super stoked. It's the first compilation that you've um you've sent out. What's the reaction been like? Well, they haven't gone out yet, but the uh, the initial announcement reaction is over the top good. You know, um, you can always tell the reaction by, you know, offer a little swap service. If you don't like the record of the month, you get to choose something else. And I had literally four swaps this month and it's usually up around the 15 mark. So congratulations. Wow. Yeah, it's very good. <laughs> well, it's a killer compilation, isn't it? I mean, you, you know this for a start. You revealed to me that uh, you still play it in the car. Which is fantastic. I love that. I love that so much. But um, every curator's nightmare is having to leave some things off. I suppose. What What was your What did your long list look like? How How long was that to start with? So initially, when Universal came to us and they said we would love to do something with you, uh, I said, "Well, we've got to put it out to the members." So I started the Sound as Ever Facebook group in February 2020. So it was a month for, before the pandemic, mm. and it was literally just because I couldn't find a 90s resource uh, online on Australian music. Um, I was writing an article about David McComb. I wanted to know what he was doing in the 90s because I'd heard he'd moved to Melbourne, and yeah. I was thinking, "Well, how would I find out? And who would I ask?" Where did he live? Um, I heard Fitzroy, but how could I verify that? There were all these question marks. And I rang a friend of mine and said and said to him, is there any kind of Australian 90s music resource? And he said, no, but if there was, I'd love to be part of it. And I said, well, why don't, why don't I start a Facebook group that is just for that decade that just adores and idolises and documents uh, 90s Australian music? We started it that night. It was September. It was February fifteen, and literally we called it "Sound as Ever" after the first UMI album. Um, and literally within a week, I think we had ten thousand members, and that has now gone up to over twenty thousand in three years. Mm -hmm. So when Universal came to us and said we'd love to work with you, we love what you're doing on on Sound as Ever because now there's this place to to love and idolise Australian music once more, I said, we have to put it out to our members. We have to ask the members what they want to hear on vinyl. Uh, and so we did a poll. We said, if we were to put a, an Australian music compilation together from the 90s, what would be on it? So then we got our short list from that, and that was about, I reckon that was about 40 songs. And oh. then we had to do that really precarious juggling act where some um, we couldn't get the copyright or the clearances to just because Universal have those or whatever whatever politics was involved. So from there we 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 got the final list together, and I'm super stoked. I think the hardest thing though, Ben, was actually what order to play them in. Do you know what I mean? Like how to put them on the record. What and what was that order? Did, was it just uh, used used your gut to get through? I mean, it obviously starts with Rat Cat. For a reason, it starts with Ratcat because the album's called Blind Love, which yep. is a nod to their to their debut album. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it made sense to start with Ratcat, and for me, the '90s really does start with Ratcat. I mean, purists would argue, no, 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 it starts with the Hummingbirds. But for me, for me personally, it, yeah. it's Ratcat, and then I kind of, you know, I tried to go male, female where possible, oh, yeah. uh, and also kind of chronologically. So I think the second half of the record is more the later. 90s stuff you're something for Kate to jeopardize your ammonias mm -hmm. uh, spider bank but the first half is kind of that classic early 90s sound rat cat were very important for the the, the early 90s I'm, I'm a big fan myself and i it, for me it starts there as well but what, what's your personal favorite on on there what 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 what's the most special band that you stumbled upon and all that 
Well, I didn't stumble upon any of them because I know them like the back of my hand because I was on yes. Triple J at the time. So still playing. You know, there's no stumbling. It they're they you know they they all mean something to me. And all those artists on the record, all those bands mean something to me in some way, shape, or form. I had some kind of relationship with them, whether it was professional or you know, a, a, you know, um, in some instances you know, quite personal with, with, you know, the likes of Ash from Caligula, yeah. you know, is really great mate and um, uh, members of members of the clouds and things like that. So, um, and, and Magic Dirt, who I just adore. So um, I, I can't tell you that I have a particular favourite song, but I just, I love the entire compilation. And I think the songs we chose uh, are, are representative of that era. I mean, we put you're not the only one that feels this way by ammonia we could have done drugs we could have done um uh um mint 400 or something like that something off mint 400 yeah. whatever but i i really wanted to get those songs that had cut through that really meant something the anth more anthemic tracks um so yeah the more singles i think yeah, the ones that, you know, like, you know, DIF by Powderfinger was an interesting choice as well. A brilliant choice, but an interesting choice as well. Similar similar vibes there, I would say, with the ones that really sort of connected with you at the time. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, yeah, the, and the ones that have got great stories to them as well. Yeah. You know, I, when I sat there writing the liner notes and and thinking about what what each song meant to me or what song what each song may have meant to the band in their career um mm. i think they're pretty integral songs i mean daf by powderfinger was the one that really really launched them uh yeah. in the stratosphere you know into into bon jovi massive stratosphere in my opinion yeah. um you know that 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 kind of opened the doors for what we would know as powderfinger um so that yeah that that yeah. that was a no brainer how would you describe that time? I mean, that's a pretty open-ended question, but for those that weren't there, there's a lot a lot of people in my club who weren't there. How would you describe that that time be between 1990 and 1999? It was a wonderful time, wasn't it? Absolutely, it was a wonderful time, but what does that wonderful time mean? It was a time where bands could experiment and and really, really own their genre. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. It was a time when record companies had a lot of money to spend because mm -hmm. we'd come out of the 80s, which everyone says was a time of greed. <laughs> the 80s was a time of greed. Um, and, and you know, we'd seen all the formation of these underground music scenes uh, in, in the inner cities, and they really were concentrated in the inner cities. And then when Nirvana changed the world in 1991, suddenly every record company realised that they didn't have these bubbling access to any of these bubbling underground scenes that have been going on since, you know, the early to late eighties, mm -hmm. um, all these subgenres, which were now coming to the fore, mm -hmm. um, which is why, which is why Rat Cat got so famous, which is why Frente got so famous. They kind of seemingly to the general public, they came out of nowhere, but they'd been bubbling in these inner city venues, these live music venues, these sticky carpet venues uh, for so long. It took one song, certainly in Rat Cat's, case it took that ain't bad which kind mm -hmm. of kicks everything off and 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 for frente you know people people only know people only really remember them for accidentally kelly street but for, for, for them it was labor of love that 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 started their career uh which led to obviously accidentally kelly street but record companies had money they signed bands and suddenly it was you know uh a and r waving checkbook men at the back of the pubs wanting to sign a band before anybody else did because they knew that there was the potential for these bands to become big because they'd missed the rat cat they'd missed the friend taste you know silver chair is another example mid mid decade where you know three major record labels were fighting over them to sign them because they knew they'd be big um i think if you were creative in the 90s you would probably most likely be signed up, you know, and and have that have the have the creative ability to make the music that you wanted to make. Camera phones weren't around, so you know we can look back with fondness. Thank God, social media wasn't around then, because you know a lot of us a lot of us made mistakes and stumbled back then. And thank God they're not not too well documented. Um, you know, there's great stories, um, but also we saw for the first time something like Home Bake could only have really existed in the 90s, which was a celebration of Australian music. You know, we saw the big day out. 
that went national from 1993 onwards. Mm -hmm. um, Triple J went national. That was a really big deal because before that it was only commercial commercial stations really yeah. uh, in each capital city and in regional towns. And Triple J connected these regional town kids to the city kids. And suddenly, you know, uh, o'clock at night listening to the request best with Michael Tun, they were all doing their homework wherever yeah. they were around the country, you know. Yeah. Um, and recovery, of course, the TV show that I was fortunate enough to be involved with. So there was so much camaraderie, you know, music uh, and television and radio were really, really the mediums by which we discovered new music and we found our kind. You know, you were either into your indie pop or your indie rock or you're into your punk rock, you know, uh, there were yeah. little tribes. Yeah. Um, I just, it was such a wonderfully healthy scene and it's interesting that, a lot of the artists that feature on this particular compilation of Fly and Love are still going today, are still making music, are still creative as ever. They are. That's the, the that's a beautiful thing about this country we live in, I think. You know, it's it, the 90s were a perfect synergy for alternative and indie music, but it seems to have left a beautiful hangover somewhat, hasn't it? Do you have it's any... really testament to the time that those artists were allowed to develop, and I think record companies gave them ga gave them you know, the kind of, uh, I guess, leeway to develop and, and create and each album was an, an experimentation. Of course, we saw casualties of the 90s. It wasn't all just, you know, hey, longevity careers forever and ever. Um, there were casualties. Um, they are lamented. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they are Sidewinder. Lamented. Sidewinder, I, I wish they were still going. I know members of Sidewinder are still going in solo careers and I know um, Marty, Marty Craft is, on really well in, in the UK playing with the likes of Jarvis Cocker, for instance. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I've got I would what I would give to see them again or Pollyanna, you know, um, you know, you know, there were some short-lived careers in in all of that, of course. But it was a, just a fertile, a fertile creative time and so much camaraderie between the artists. That's what a lot of the bands tell me. Yeah, yeah. It's a perfect storm in a way, isn't it? And it's um I'm sure I could talk to you all day about stories. You could you could tell me a thing or two. Is there a story that pops into your head uh, about a good festival day or something that you recall that was like, you know, Australian music, Australian alternative music's truly arrived? <laughs> well, the fact that Homebake had a, um, a drag queen perform on the festival lineup. Wow. Um, um, who was trans called Pauline Pants Down. Oh, yes. Um, Pauline yes. Pants Down is not on Blind Love, but I mean, that, that to me is Australian <laughs> music at its very best. Triple J played the Pauline Pants Down song, I Don't Like It. Um, and, and Pauline Pants Down got to perform at Home Bake. And I, I remember that. That stands in my mind because I think she was wedged between Grinspoon and, say, Spider Bait. And you never forget her because it was just so odd, but it was so, it, it worked because it was of the time, you know. Pauline Hanson's One Nation had only just been started from memory and, you know, people people were afraid. People were worried about what what this One Nation party represented, what it might, where it might go, who this woman was. Um, so I think that's a really good social political comment. But, I mean, if you want politics, I mean, in Surge, who are, who are on Blind Love, mm -hmm. they started out as Soul Scraper. Um, talking about the music industry that they saw around them, the A and R men waving their checkbooks around and things like that, and they kind of were developed into insurgents and they're talking about political prisoners, which I think is still at today, considering what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. so yeah, that 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 band springs to mind. But you know what, Ben? I did so many big day outs and home bakes, and uh, yeah, I don't know if Splendor uh, yeah. was around then, but you know they all merge into one for me. But Again, you know, working with Dylan Lewis on recovery, you know, that that epitomizes the nineties for me. My braids and my clips, you know. Oh <laughs> yes. yes. Loving Simon Day. I had Simon Day on my bedroom wall. Tex Birkins, I absolutely adored him. Yes. Um, they're all turning yeah, uh, so, they're all turning thirty, these but these big albums at the moment, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, you were certainly synonymous for all of us, I think, Jane in the nineties, that's for sure. <laughs> like, that's why I'm I'm so stoked to be talking to you today. What um, what's next for Sound as Ever? I mean, are there more compilations? Uh, I feel like some of these stories could be told. Will you write another book? What what what's the story? So we 
have Sound as Ever Volume 2, the book, ready. Oh, you do? We're working on that at the moment. So, and that will feature, the first Sound as Ever book featured more artist stories and stories behind the songs and, you know, nice memories from artists like Tumbleweed remembering touring up and down the East Coast in the Tarago. But I think with the second Sound as Ever book, we're going to open that up to our members who are now over 20,000. And get their '90s memories. You know, I think I think you know those stories need to be told. Some were told in the first volume, but I really want to open it up. And yeah, we've released the Greenhouse record. So Greenhouse were a Geelong band oh, right. uh, who were around kind of early '90s, mm -hmm. and they never quite got there. They had a couple of singles on Triple J. It was all looking fantastic for them, and then. As they say, grunge kind of came and took over and their brand of shoegazy indie pop was kind of no longer mm. in fashion. They just released their debut album, recently toured with the Happy Mondays around Australia and have got this second second lease of life. They're touring the UK now. Um, okay. They're going to be playing the Shine On Festival with a whole bunch of other British bands and the Inspiral Carpets. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've been releasing records on our own sound as ever label with want to keep doing that and and bands are coming to us and going guess what we found this demo under the bed or in the garage do you want to release it so it's i never have a full-time plan for sound as ever because it's 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 an organic thing it kind of looks after itself or things come to us and we go with them like any good partnership i'm sure you had aspirations to be at twenty thousand followers but did you have any idea it would go that quick <laughs> no ridiculous. idea no no <laughs> who knew <laughs> nostalgia <laughs> that's it now jane your life's obviously very different now do you get out to see bands very often these days yeah i do yeah and, i still i still go to go to gigs and I go and see bands um and, i saw on saturday night there was a 90s band that was signed to bark which was an imprint of mushroom mm -hmm. it wasn't i think bark may have been pollyanna as well um no, they were Murmur, maybe. Anyway, um, I went and saw a band, uh, JP Shiloh, who featured uh, a guy called Glenn Lewis from Violetine. So I'm still mm. seeing my 90s musicians. So what does that say about me? <laughs> and do you see maybe any? Maybe still stuck in the 90s. Do you see any Australian music now that you love? Uh, all the time. I mean, I love Amel, you know, oh. love Amel and the Sniffers. I love Jack Ladder. I've just been listening to his, his output like for so long. I'm. Such mm. an uh, unashamed fan. Awesome. You know, there's there's new bands that I saw a big sound like Joan and the Giants out of Perth and um, uh, a couple of bands out of Geelong like Paraquay or Paraquay. Mm -hmm. I never know how to say that. <laughs> um, and Good Sniff, for example. Um, so, yeah, so still seeing new music. Yeah, and it's still your underground music too by the sounds. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Jane. Well, I'll let you get back to your day, but thank you so much for that today. I really, really appreciate no it. No worries. Um, and I'm just so glad you like it. And... Oh, I love it. I love it. It's it's beyond love. I mean, you're speaking directly to me. So um, I, I figure you just put that together for me personally, but um, there's a lot of us out What's there. What's your favourite track on the album, Ben? Oh, good, good, uh, good choice. Um, I'm a big Rat Cat fan from way back, but I'm a, I'm a custard softy all the way. Um, I've got huge memories of seeing the Foves open for Regurgitator and Tism at Festival Hall when I first moved to Brisbane. So they're they're one of those. That was my first mosh pit. You know, I was a, I was a little young fellow and I'd never seen a mosh pit before coming from North Queensland. Grinspoon are still amazing. Ah, there's just so many there. I, I'm a big Dead Star fan as well. That 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 song I hadn't heard in a long long time. So that was Caligula. They had some had some chart time as well didn't they that was just fantastic yeah, just, you know. yeah and a lot of those songs haven't been on vinyl before so no, I no, think that's no. what makes it quite special I've been trying to work out which ones haven't actually but I assume it's pretty obvious you know once you get through to the you know I don't think Apartment by Custard has you know I've been looking at repressing that one with Sony myself but I haven't got there yet don't tell anyone that because there's everybody <laughs> repressing everything at the moment you've got to be you've got to keep it all close close to your chest I featured um, the Cruel Sea, um, the honeymoon is over. We did that earlier in the year when it turned thirty. So everyone yeah. went for that. So this is a nice little, nice little follow up for that. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Well, nice. Uh, have a nice afternoon. Great to chat to you, Ben. You too, Jane. You take care. Have a great okay. afternoon. Bye.